great declaration that we are putting our trust in him alone. sense of your holiness, that we would just bask in your presence this morning and realize how much you love us and how much you did when you went to the cross to save us. Father, thank you that we can be free from sin, we can be free from addictions, we can be free from those weights, those um, things that hold us down. Father, thank, the, thank you that you sent your son to break all of those chains and to free us from those things. Lord, we want to worship you this morning and we continue um, in worship, whether it's through prayer, through song, through the spoken word. Lord, we love you and we want, um, we want to focus our attention on you. And so may this morning be all about you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated.
So everybody's heading down that way towards Theater 4 this morning. So we'll invite our boys and girls to, to go down that way. Well, welcome. We're glad to, uh, to be together on this uh, coolish, uh, wet day. And so some of us, we're out of here. We're, we're heading to the desert. <laughs> and so... Uh, at breakfast this morning, Jan- Jana says, you know, I've, I've got, she says, I've got my phone set so I know what the temperature's like in an all wash. And so it's, it's 35 degrees today out in the, de- in the desert. So next, next Monday, a week from tomorrow, we'll, we'll be de- down, down there. So uh, welk, welcome. It's good, it's good to, for us to be, be, to, be together. Uh, a couple of things to highlight. Uh, youth uh, starts up again tonight, and so they'll be meeting here at uh, s- seven seven o'clock. And so our our junior high ministry kicked off this on, on Thursday, and they're meeting every, every second week. And so uh, if you have friends connections in those age brackets, uh, make make sure you uh, you get uh, them connected to that. Um, so when I'm, when I'm away, there's a num- number of people that we've got fill, filling in and look, looking after things. Um, it's interesting, that as, as we come to the word, word this morning, uh, and ta- in this series on, on deep cleaning, uh, the, the, the message is focused around pride. And I got thinking this week, you know, I'm, I'm, there, there's, there's just some good elements of pride. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of OCC, because I was t- talking to somebody, part of another, another church, and they said, you, you have to bring a whole bunch of speakers in from outside to, uh, to, to share while you're away. And I said, no, we've got, you know, Sean Angel, who's been part of things for, for a while. So he's, he's sharing, Pastor Brent's back, and he's going to be sharing a couple of times. D- Dave, David's going to be sharing. The, the only external speaker we're bringing in is somebody who's also part of OCC on, on some of our worship teams, is Scott Jackson. So it, it's, it's, it feels good for me to be able to recognize that we've got that giftedness and, and people are, are, are using that. We are bringing a, a couple of uh, people in to help lead worship during the time, not because I'm the worship leader by any, any, any means, uh, but just to give, because of other, other things uh, in, in our church family, we, we just need some additional help with, with, with worship. So a couple of up, updates. Are we fading here, Mark? A couple of updates in terms of uh, prayer. Uh, continue to pray for, for, for Colleen. She's uh, getting, uh, has to go to the hospital pretty well every day to get the antibiotic injected into her, her pick, pick line. So it's, it's draining do, doing that. So pray, pray for her. Brenda had surgery on her foot on, on Friday and uh, was recovering quite, quite well. Uh, it does not need, or yesterday anyways, didn't need the, the morphine uh, that they gave, gave her. Um, so uh, she, she, but she needs to be off her foot for uh, a couple of weeks. So no, no load, load bearing. So that's going to be uh, a challenge for her. So uh, pray, pray, pray for, uh, for, for Brenda and for Ray and, and all of that. Um, Pray for uh, Tina Billings. Uh, Tina there, uh, is having a hip hip replacement tomorrow, and so um, pray pray for that surgery and and her recovery. She'll be going back to the, the Billings uh, to uh, to recover. So help them to be strong and firm and make her do her exercises. <laughs> um. As, as, as we go, as Janice and Judy and I go to uh, Ethiopia and then Uganda, uh, pray for, yeah, there's, there's a ton of last minute stuff that need, needs, needs to get done. Uh, and just pray, pray for all of those de- details. Um, pray that we would be able to minister effectively uh, and, and bring, bring encouragement. To uh, where we're meeting with some some young young believers next Sunday morning. I'm speaking to a fairly large church in in, in Addis, and that would be able to, to bring encouragement to, to them. Um, pray for the, the 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 pastoral gatherings that I'll be speaking at uh, a number of numerous times in Uganda, and just that. I would not bring a Western mindset, but I'd bring God's mindset to speak and to encourage and, and to lift, lift people up in, in, in those areas. And so let, let, let's take a moment right now and pray. So Father, we come before you 
And Lord, we, we, we gather and we've already sung some songs that declare that we need you to, to build what you want to do in our lives. We need you to, to stretch us. We need, we need you to, to, uh, to cleanse us. And sometimes life can leave us feeling like a mess, a mess that's just too complicated to figure out. But with you, with you, all things are possible. With you, you bring healing. With you, you bring restoration. And so, Lord, we pray all of this. Lord, we, we, we pray for Ed and Colleen and all of the adjustments that they're going through right now with uh, uh, this, this medication, this this. Uh, pick line and having to be at hospital for, for blood work and, and for new antibiotics. Lord, we pray for, uh, for Sue Adams and, and she ministers to her mom and her recovery from uh, brain surgery. Lord, we, we pray for Brenda uh, that uh, this uh, tendon surgery in her foot would, would heal well. Lord, we pray for, for Aaron as he waits for, a, for an MRI this, this, this next month. And just, Lord, for them and for, for, for Tina Billings, for, for others in our church family, for others in our, in our connections, in our circles. Father, enable us to come alongside. Enable us to care. Enable us to bring the message, the good news that there really is hope in Jesus. Father, I, I pray for the team of us who are going to be in Ethiopia and Uganda. And Father, I pray that we would just know your, your leading, your power, and your presence. When there's, we know there's going to be times when we haven't got a clue what we're doing. But Lord, you empower us by your spirit for the glory of your name. Lord, as, as we come, we bring ourselves. And so whatever you've come with this morning, I invite you to, to lift it up before the Lord. You know, just tell him in, in the quietness of your heart right now, Lord, I'm, I'm bringing, bringing you this joy, this excitement, this, um, this thankfulness, this gratitude for some things that are happening. Lord, I bring you my disappointments, my hurts, my pain for some other things that are happening. Thank you, Lord, that you know all about these things. You know that what we're going through, you know what we're experiencing, and you care. You care deeply. And so, Lord, as we, as we sit here in your presence with brothers and sisters this morning, we, we hold our hands out. And we say, Lord, this is who I am. This is what I'm bringing this morning. And I offer you, I offer you myself. And as your hands are open, just receive from the Lord. Receive what he wants to pour into your life right at this moment, this morning, today, this coming week. Let him speak into your life that, that word of peace, that word of encouragement, a word of comfort, that word of, of, of challenge to step forward, to step out, that word that you know what it is that the Lord's speaking right now into you. And so hold your hands open, receive from him. Receive it with, with thankfulness and with gratitude. And so, Lord, I pray that you would be doing things in our lives that we aren't even aware that you're really doing them. But, Father, help us to be open to all that you are doing. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to uh, share together in, in communion this morning. And as you came in, you, you should have received a little... Uh, one of those cups. Did anybody not get one? Okay, yeah, just, 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 just raise your hand and uh, Doug, Doug's going to uh, bring a, a basket full down and uh, take, take, take one of those. We'll give you directions on, on how to op open that in, in just, just a moment. But as Doug is distributing that, we're going to watch a, a short video uh, that uh, highlights the elements of communion. 
My friends, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. This is my body, which is broken for you. This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. But one of you, here at the table, is going to betray me. It isn't me. I would never do such a thing. Of course it's not you. You're so much greater than the rest of us, aren't you? Well, what if I am the greatest? Look. You do not realize now what I am doing. But later, you will understand. No. No, Lord. You can't wash my feet. This is servant's work. You are the master. Unless I wash your feet, you have no part in me. Judas. What you are about to do, do quickly. Do you understand what I've done for you? You call me teacher and lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. But now that I, your lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I will be with you only a little longer. Lord, where are you going? Simon. You can't come where I'm going, but you will follow later. But why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Will you really lay down your life for me? Before the rooster crows this morning, you will have denied me three times. But I have prayed for you. My children, I'm giving you a new commandment. Love one another. In the same way I have loved you, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. Come, let us all go to the garden. I invite the worship team to come back and they're, they're gonna lead us in a song in just a moment. So you notice this little cup. There's a little plastic layer that you can split off that will open up the, the, the wafer and then there's another layer that will pull off so you can drink from the, uh, the, 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 the juice. And then so Jesus said, take, eat. In the context, not of drinking from a little, little cup and a little wafer, but in the context of a, of a meal, of a, a Passover feast that week. And he said, take, eat. This bread, which is broken for you, it represents my body being broken for you. And then he said, take and drink of this cup, which represents my blood being poured out for you, as the author of Hebrews will, will tell us, once and for all. No more sacrifices. He's paid it all. And so we eat and we drink this remembrance, these elements, these emblems, as a sign, as a remembrance of all that Jesus has done for each one of us because he loves you, he loves me.
And so I invite you as the team leads us in this song, just at whatever point you feel uh, you, you, you want to, tear off the plastic sheet, eat the bread, and then tear, tear off the, the other layer and drink of the cup as, as we sing at the cross.
Father, we take this cup and this bread in thankfulness for what you have done for us. Lord, we thank you uh, for your mercy and your grace that was poured out at the cross. And as we just saw a picture, a depiction of Jesus washing the disciples' feet, Lord, you have done that for us. You have, you have humbled yourself before us to welcome us into the kingdom. And Lord, we thank you for the work that was done on the cross. Lord, accept our gratitude and our thanks. For we thank you in Jesus' precious name because of the blood that was shed. Amen. I'd like to um, call uh, the leadership team up. Um, John, that would be you. I think actually Max Perkis is away on vacation and um, John Blythe, if you could come up to the front. And um, Matt, uh, actually Steve Grimes is off today. You could be praying for him. He's uh, put his back out, so he's not able to be with us this morning. And uh, Alan and Stan, if you want to come up. And we want to call Judy Page and uh, Janice Bells and Mike Bells up to the front. What we'd like to do as a congregation is pray for them and kind of commission them as they go out uh, to visit Ethiopia and Uganda and the work that God has called them to do there. And um, they're going to be leaving on Saturday, uh, long, long flights to get there. And as soon as they hit the ground on Sunday, they're going to be running. Uh, Mike will be preaching Sunday morning, and as we've been told, uh, Ethiopian and you know many African countries, their worship services are not like punctually an hour long like ours are. Uh, they go on and on and on for hours. So, so Mike and Janice and Judy will be um, at that worship service. Mike is going to be preaching. We really need to pray for strength for him, and um, and then they have a long day of visiting. And so um, that's the beginning of their, their stay there. And then their schedule is jam-packed full with ministry opportunities, um, with, with kids, women, and um, uh, men. And so we, we just want to be praying that God will um, uh, cover them with his, his blessing and his grace and, uh, and give them strength for the journey. So we're just going to put our hands on them and come around you as we pray for you. And um, uh, we'll just have a couple of our, a few of our team pray, and then I'll close off, OK? Pass the mic if you, to those guys. God, thank you for this opportunity and for the willing hearts of Janice and uh, Judy and Mike heading off um, to Africa. Please let them be a blessing to those they come in contact with, but also let the Afar people and the Ugandan people be a blessing to them as they build relationships across cultures. I pray that you'll just keep their immune systems strong for any of the ailments that they might come in contact with, help them be strong throughout their entire journey, and uh, just bless their time. Father God Almighty, we thank you for this day, and again, Father, we ask and pray for traveling mercies for, for Mike and Janice and Judy. We ask and pray, Father, that you would continue to give them the strength they need each day, and Father, to continue to fill them with the words that you have for them to, to give to others. Father, we not only pray for them, but we also pray for the folks that they will be ministering to and that they will be meeting, Lord, in, in Ethiopia and Uganda. Father, we ask and pray that you'll be preparing their hearts and their minds. Father, that, uh, as uh, Pastor Mike has said earlier, that you know they go forward not with a, a Western mindset, but with understanding of the culture, Lord, and the ministry that needs to be, take place there. So we ask and pray for your blessing to be upon them. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we just ask that you would uh, have your hand on these people. As, uh, as they would go, as they each have their own skill set that they are taking, as they are going to be working with <clears throat> the, uh, the locals there. Lord, we just uh, pray that you would help them, that you would use them, 
and and their gifts to uh, to deal specifically with with some of the needs there that they would be able to teach that they would be able to lead by example that they would encourage the church there that uh, as they recognize the um, the cost, the the time involved, the finances involved, of just coming and spending time with them, that that, that alone would encourage them. But that um, that uh, just, just recognizing that uh, as they have prayed for us and we have prayed for them, that it goes beyond that, that uh, this is putting, putting uh, feet on the street, um, and uh, seats on camels and, and all of those things. Lord, we just uh, pray that they would be a blessing to the church there, that they, uh, the work that has been started would, would grow. We know some of the uh, difficulties that they've been faced with recently and, and some of the fear that has actually been uh, in the church. And, um, and we just ask that, uh, that you would use this experience, this time, this teaching, um, this caring that uh, that you would grow the church there and that your hand would be on this team of ours that uh, uh, we hold dearly here and uh, we've seen what they've been able to do in our midst and uh, we just pray that that would continue over there. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we play your hand on these people as they travel. Keep them safe, Lord. We know that you have a message for them to deliver. We know, Lord, that you will yes. inhabit the praise and the prayers and the preaching of these people as they go forth. Lord, their witness is strong, and, their, and you will fill them with your Holy Spirit power. Lord, we pray that your hand will be on them, that they will go forth in faith, and that you will empower all that they do. So, Lord, keep them safe. Keep them <clears throat> together, and may your word and your power and your Holy Spirit bless their time there. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Father, I thank you for the calling that you have placed on pastors, Pastor Mike's life. I thank you for the calling that you've placed on Janice's life, and for the calling that you've placed on Judy. Father, that you have called them out as a witness for you, Lord, that they are not, I thank you that they are not turning inward and, and um, staying in a safe place, but they're stepping out into their calling that you've placed on their life. Lord, as they travel, I pray that they would be an encouragement to others. Father, I pray that as they visit the different villages in the Afar region and also in Uganda, that it would be like a, a breath of fresh air to those people, that they would have hope, that they would um, be filled with, with a sense of anticipation and, and, and hope for their, their future. Lord, I pray that many will have their eyes opened to the truth of your love, and they will come to know you personally and follow you. Father, for the, the pastors that Mike will be teaching, Lord, I pray that they will be infused with, with power um, to go out and, and teach those that they come in contact with and those that they are ministering to in their churches. But Father, we also pray that Mike and Janice and Judy would be encouraged themselves while they are there, that they would see that um, you are at work in so many different areas and Lord, I pray that that would just really excite them and their enthusiasm, enthusiasm would come back to us. And as they relay some of the stories that take place, Lord, may we be sensitive to your leading and your, your guiding. And, and I just pray that that enthusiasm will spill over onto us. Lord, we, we feel like we're part of the team too. And so as we receive updates and prayer requests, Lord, may we be diligent to keep them continually in prayer, praying that the enemy would not have any victory over them in discouragement or uh, tiredness or irritability, but he would, um, but that your spirit would just overcome all of those things and that uh, their health would remain intact, that um, their spirits would remain uh, fresh and that they would uh, be 
blessed as they pour out themselves to these people. And so, Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to bless them and to send them out in your name and uh, to represent OCC. And so, Lord, thank you. We praise you, and we just thank you for this opportunity that you've given to them and, and pray that um, your name will be lifted high through all of it. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you. If you want to be part of the prayer team and get the updates, send me a note, uh, email to mike at occweb.org, and I'll add you to the, the uh, email blast that goes out. Um, there's others on the team as well, uh, just so you're aware. Uh, there's a, a young young woman from Barrie, Hannah, who's part of our, our team. Uh, there's a couple I've known for, for many, many years, Ian and Denise, who live in Cambridge, who are, who are coming, and Ian's going to be teaching at the Bible school with me, and he'll be also down in, down in the FR. And, and then there's a couple of other women who are joining, uh, joining the team for part of the Uganda ministry, particularly connecting with uh, I, I Live Again Uganda. So that's um, Joy and Laura, so uh, jo joining us there. Are joining Janice and Judy because I'm not, I, I'm not with them when they're in Uganda. I'm still in Ethiopia. They leave Uganda and I go to Uganda for two weeks. So it's, it's, we 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 since OCC has started to get involved with SIM, we have totally messed up their understanding of mission trips because we, we we do things differently. <laughs> Now that's an introduction that says that today we're going to talk about the sin of pride. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> how, how, many, how many of you would, would ever say, you know what, there's, 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 there's times I've got, I've got a problem with pride. Raise, raise your hand. Okay, this, this message is for you, but more so it's for those of you who didn't raise your hand. Uh, because the truth of the matter is all of us at one level or another struggle with some issues around pride. And, uh, and the, the, the truth is that uh, pride is, is ridiculously difficult to identify, ridiculously um, challenging. So, so what do we know about pride? There's, there's a couple of things we need to acknowledge. Uh, n n number one, Pride is dangerously destructive. And uh, I think you've got to jump ahead a couple of slides there, Maureen, to that. And number two, pride is, is difficult to detect. It's incredibly destructive, but it's also very difficult to see in ourselves. Most of us, when we think of the, the bad sins, we, we think of things like murder and greed. And, but, you know, all of us have a little bit of pride. And the truth is that God hates pride. In fact, Proverbs says, Proverbs 16, 5, the Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they'll not go unpunished. Or Proverbs 8, 13, all who fear the Lord will hate evil. Therefore, I, I hate pride and arrogance. Pride is, is dangerously destructive to our souls and is very difficult to detect. And the challenge is that those who, who don't, who, who need to recognize pride in themselves often don't. Um, and so if you're open to hearing from God, I believe he's going to show us some things this morning. Now, if you battle with pride, the good news is you're, you're not alone. Uh, the good news is it happens to everybody. Throughout the Bible, we, we see all sorts of issues are, around pride. You know, beginning with, with God's first creation, Adam and Eve. They struggled with, with pride. King, King David, uh, a man after God's own heart. He struggled with pride. Peter struggled with pride. He knew all about being pr 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 prideful. He knew about being humbled and declared his loyalty to Jesus and then went on to deny him three times. Peter tells us in 1 Peter 5, in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourself to your elders. All of you, clothe yourself with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. He goes on in verse six, humble yourself under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Now, before we get, get too far into the message, a question we, we need to ask, is it always a sin to be proud? Is all pr pride sinful? And the answer is no, no. You know, when, when you see your kids treat, treat somebody kindly, or you're, you're proud of your child, and that, that, that's good, that, that's, that's the right type of proud. 
It's not sinful to, uh, to bring your best to something that matters. It's not sinful to be confident in the gifts and the talents that God's given you. That, that, that's, that's not sinful pride. Not all pride is sinful. So what is sinful pride? What makes pride sinful? It's simply this. Sinful pride is an elevation of ourselves above God. And it's a denial of our need for God. It's an elevation of ourselves above God and a denial that we actually need God. So I want to look at some types of pride this morning. The first type of sinful pride is the I'm better than you pride. I'm better than you are. We, we, we see this in, uh, for example, in, in Luke 18. And, and Jesus tells this, this story of this Pharisee who stood by himself and he prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people. These robbers and evildoers, these adulterers, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all I get. You know, the Pharisee looks, looks down at, his, at the tax collector and says, thank God, I'm not like you. It's the, I'm better than you pride. And this Pharisee had no idea of the depth of pride that he was full of. See, pride is dangerously destructive and so difficult to detect in ourselves. That's why we're calling this series not a a gentle cleansing, but a deep clean. Because that's what pride is. It's deep inside us. And now most of us don't think, say things like, I, I'm better than you. Uh, but it shows up in some of the other things that we say. Oh, I, I, would, I would never watch that movie or that TV show. I only watch shows that show no nudity or no bad language. I'd never watch anything like that. Or I, I would never drink that drink. Or I would never vote for that candidate. And, or, or there's nobody on the job site who works as hard as I do. You know, we do things like that. We say things like that. But our biggest failures are never too big for God's grace. Maybe maybe you're here simply to hear that this morning. Maybe that's the one thing you've come for. You feel like you've failed. You feel like you've let God down. You feel like you've let others down around you. And I need, need you to hear me right now. The God that we serve is a God who can handle your failures. You're not too far from God. You haven't messed too much up. He loves you. And his word says that nothing can separate you from his love. Second type of pride is the, I can handle it. I, I, can, I can handle it. And maybe, maybe if you're being honest, that's, that's you. Maybe you're the type of person who loves to give. You love to help others. But you find it really difficult to receive from others. Maybe you've been dealing with a, something, a, an obstacle, a challenge, an addiction, uh, and you, you can't overcome it because you're too prideful to even ask for help. You're thinking all the time, I can handle it. You know, one of the biggest indicators of this type of pride is the fact you very rarely pray. You really talk to God. And, and when you do, your, your prayers are, are flat. They're faithless. They're, they're predictable. God, give us a good day. God, bless his food. God, keep us safe. They're, 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 they're predictable and safe. And when you think about it, when, when we don't pray faithfully, our lack of prayer declares, I don't really need God. I can handle this. We, we see this back in the... the, the, the uh, Beginning of the Bible in Genesis, Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. God tells Adam, hey, don't eat of this fruit. Anything else you can eat, but don't eat of this fruit because you'll die. And so Adam lets Eve know, we can't eat of this particular fruit. And so Genesis tells us, the serpent comes along and tells Eve, you won't die. You're going to be like God. You'll be, you'll, you'll be like God so much that you won't need God. And then in verse 6 of Genesis 3, it says, When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it, and also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. And we often, people often skip over that little line, to her husband who was with her. He was fully involved in making this decision. It wasn't the woman sinned and then she convinced Adam. No, they were in this together. The woman was convinced. She wanted the wisdom that this fruit would give her. And she wanted to be like God. She thought, "I, I can handle being like God. And so she gives the fruit to Adam. And he doesn't even stop to ask, why are we eating this? You know, you know, I think we're, we're, we're bad about asking for directions. He didn't even ask a basic question about this. Maybe we shouldn't be doing this. What's going on here? 
And I, I sometimes wonder, what would have happened if they had had a conversation, Adam and Eve? What if they'd stopped and talked to God? And that's all prayer is. It's talking to God about the stuff that surfaces in our lives. And what if Adam stepped up and asked the question, and when God shows up, he would have fallen on his face and humbled himself. It's on me. I didn't follow through with what you said. But instead of humbling themselves, instead of humbling themselves, they fell into what we could call the pride cycle. You know, a pride cycle is, you know, I feel I can handle it, and so I'm proud of that, and that leads to sin, and that, that sin leads to feeling shame. And because of that shame, you're, you're, you're embarrassed and you don't want anybody to know and, and out of pride, you, you cover it up and you get stuck in this cycle where pride leads you to sin and sin leads you to shame and, and out of shame, you cover it up. And why do we cover it up? Because we want to pretend that we're strong enough. We want to pretend that we can handle it. In fact, the Bible says that Adam, Adam and Eve, when they ate the fruit, they realized they were naked, so they took leaves and covered their shame. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we looked at Genesis 2.25. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. Here in Genesis 3.7, they realized they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves because of the shame that they felt. We, 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 we do this with our lives. We, we act like we can handle it, and we feel shame. We don't know how to handle it. We're just covering ourselves up. If that's your type of pride, humble yourself. If you're addicted, ask for help. If you're struggling spiritually, reach out to someone. If you're battling depression, ask for help. Humble yourself and God will lift you up. So, a couple of types of pride we've talked about. I'm, I'm the I'm better than you pride. I, I can handle it pride, and, and some of you are good. Yeah, I, I made it, I'm good, because those things don't apply to me. Well, guess what pride number three is? This doesn't apply to me pride. <laughs> it doesn't apply to me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm above the rules. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm successful, I'm, I'm accomplished. Uh, and some of you are thinking, you know, a message on pride today. You know, I need to forward this to a friend. They really need to hear this. You know what? It's not for them, it's for you. Proverbs 16, verse 18 says, pride goes before destruction. A, a haughty, a, an arrogant, a conceited spirit goes before a fall. Or another way of putting it, the higher you lift yourself up in pride, the harder you'll fall in disgrace. You know, look at um, King, King, King David. Bible calls him a man after God's own heart. Now, at the time when, when kings were supposed to lead the, the army in, into war, David decides he, does, he doesn't need to go. He doesn't need to lead the army. I'm, I'm above those rules. I don't need to do that. So he stays home. And he ends up somewhere he shouldn't have been. And he sees something he shouldn't have seen. And he does something he shouldn't have done. See, he, he recognizes and feels above the rules. And so he goes to a rooftop and he sees this, this woman bathing. And he still thinks the rules don't apply to me. And he has, has her brought into, into his castle, to his house. And he sleeps with her and gets her pregnant. The rules don't apply to me. See, we, we need to understand that status without accountability is the breeding ground for pride. And the more status you have, and, and all of us have a degree of status, all of us have a degree of influence, and the more influence you have without accountability, it's the breeding ground for pride. I, I don't know where you might see that in your life, but if you're honest, maybe it's there. Maybe you're thinking, you know, I, I don't need to to do whatever. I don't need to be in relationship. I, I, I don't need to gather with believers to worship. I don't need to monitor what I'm watching. It's not hurting anyone. And we begin to rationalize things and we pretend that we're above the rules. Adam and Eve said, yeah, we, we can handle it. 
We can be like God and it leads them into sin and then to shame as they cover that up and they're embarrassed and they're vulnerable and they cover up their vulnerability. And King David, it doesn't apply to me. I'm above the rules and it leads to an affair and it leads them to feel deep shame when he gets called out and out of pride he covers it up and has the husband killed. And then Peter, Peter who says, Jesus, I'm never gonna betray you. I'm better than the rest of you disciples. I'll never betray you, Jesus. And he denies Jesus three times. And that leads him to shame and he runs away. But instead of covering up his sin, instead of covering up his shame, Peter comes to the place of humbling himself. And so Peter would write, humble yourselves therefore. Under God's mighty power and at the right time, he will lift you up. Now, this is, this is Peter who wrote that. The, the guy who denied Jesus, the, the guy who, who, when Jesus called him to step out of the, the boat on, into the, the, the water, and he sees the wind and he waves, and he begins to sink. And what's he do when, when Jesus sees them? Jesus reaches out his mighty hand and lifts them up. And that same God that lifts Peter up, this is the same God that lifts you and I out of our messes when we humble ourselves. And maybe you've, got, you've come this morning and it's time to humble yourself. Time to agree with God, acknowledge, confess a sin. Maybe it's time to humble yourself and ask for help. Maybe it's time to humble yourself and, and turn back to God. Luke 18, 14 says, all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. See, pride is dangerously destructive. It's difficult to detect. But the moment you do, when we humble ourselves before God, he will lift you up. Let's pray. And so God, we, we thank you that you're a father who loves us. That no matter what we've done in our lives, you're, you're there for us, ready to forgive us ready to lift us up out of our sinfulness. And so as we close this morning, I invite you to, to take a moment to slow down and to pray. And simply ask the Lord, God, do I have pride? And I believe that as we pray that prayer, as you pray this prayer, he'll reveal that to us. He'll show you any area in your life where you're wrestling with pride. Maybe you're here and say, yeah, I, I recognize those, those areas of pride, that sinful pride. Maybe you recognize you're acting like you don't need God, that you've elevated yourself above others. Maybe you're saying, I struggle with this and I, I want to be set free. And so I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to open myself up before the Lord. And so, Lord, I pray right now for every person in this room. I pray that each one who is honest, who is being honest with you, who is saying, I'm willing to humble myself before you, I pray that even in this moment, your Holy Spirit would come and that your hand, that your mighty hand would lift them up. Maybe, maybe you're here this morning because God's brought you here for a very specific reason. You've been trying to, to fill your life a void in your life with all sorts of different things. You've gone from relationship to relationship. You've, you've tried substances, but you know you can't fill that void. Maybe you're proud that you've never done any of those things. And here's the truth. We, we all sin. We all mess up. You've sinned. I've sinned. The Bible says we all fall short of what God desires. And that leads us to have shame. And today is the day that you can be rid of that. And the only way you can do that is by humbling yourself before a God who loves you and is ready to forgive you and to give you new life. And maybe that's why you're here today, to turn away from that and to turn afresh towards Jesus and just receive his forgiveness, his grace, his mercy. So thank you, Lord, that you love us. You are here for each person gathered in this room, each person who's watching online. 
Father, call, you call us today. You know, tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day when you want to do your work. And so we respond to you. And so, Lord, as we humble ourselves before you, acknowledge that you're God and that we're not. Father, I pray that you'd pour out your spirit in a mighty way, that you would pour out your spirit to cause us to lift up praises to you because you will lift us up as we humble ourselves before you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the team leads us, and we're going to stand and sing. If you want someone to pray with you, and just invite you to come to the front, and we can gather and, and uh, pr- pray, pray for you uh, with whatever God's doing in your life right now. We want to sing a song that... Uh, in the chorus it says I will bow down and tell you that I need you sometimes that's the first step it's just humbling ourselves as Mike has said and, and saying God I need you I realize that I can't do this on my own I need you and so uh, we're going to uh, sing that to him this morning uh, would you stand with us as we sing
up to see that there's none above God and God alone. Look back and see his faithfulness and look ahead believing that he is able to do above and beyond all that we could ever imagine. Go and enjoy your week. Man, and if you would like to somebody to pray with you, please come to the front and we'd be happy to do that.